Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Sandy. I don't know if we're live. I think we're live. It looks like we are. Um, I want to welcome everybody. Uh, I'm over here in the Clearwater area and we're about to get a little bit of weather. So I wanted to come on a little bit early. So I apologize to those that were waiting for 730. I'm just pulling up my phone to see if I can see anybody that is going to want to respond. For 730. Ah. I'm just pulling up my phone to see if I can see anybody. There we go. Yep. So there we go. I feel like sometimes like a grandma when I'm like trying to find the right button. All right. So I'm flying solo tonight. We have a special guest next week. Uh, we have um, somebody that is an educator and she's pretty amazing. Her name is Dr. Weekman. Uh, so I'm looking forward to her coming on. There is a couple more people that we're going to be getting on. Uh, sometimes during the week, we might have somebody from a different country that, you know, time frame, it's a little bit difficult for them to come on. Um, tonight, I wanted to talk a little bit about ways to decrease the mental cluster of circumstances, the things that we think constantly in our mind that is like kind of like a cluster F, you know, like the negative thoughts, the, you know, it's always something. It's never anything positive that's going through our head. We, as soon as we get a positive thought, it's usually, you know, a negative thought right behind it. Like, and the ways, of course, Stella has to start talking because she's a little jealous. Um, some things that we, um, they hear other dogs. So I apologize. Hold on just a moment. Some ways that we can break free from some of the mental cluster, you know, we always call it the great cluster F, right? Um, when we're, when we're on the floor, some of the things that we limit, we self limit ourselves a lot. Um, like I can't, and that's just not my luck. I am not good at this. I am terrible. I can't, I don't know how I'm going to be able to keep up. These are all of these things that go on in our mind that tells us and reinforces, no, you're not going to be able to do it. And it's not going to ever happen because you're just, you know, it's just something we're programming ourselves and conditioning ourselves to think that we're not going to be able to achieve our greatness when really we can. But the problem is, is that when you continuously when you continuously do the self-talk and you're, and you're like, ah, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. And then you go off and you're, you know, and you make jokes like dark humor. Um, you know, you label people like, oh, look, here's the, um, here's the crazy one, Mr. Smith, he's coming back in again. Um, you laugh at the most inappropriate things that you normally wouldn't laugh at. Like, would your child think it's funny, right? Probably not. Would your mom think it's funny? Probably not because they won't understand when you find yourself laughing, which, you know, sometimes I'll find myself laughing, you know, at some of the things that I say or do, or the things that I think of people tend to think, oh, well, she's having a party all by herself. Well, you know, it can be good because I'm trying to break my cycle. I'm trying to break how my mind is trying to, trying to make myself have a bad day. Um, so, you know, labeling over, you know, generalizing, like, you know, the fish that you actually caught was this big, but it was actually like this big, you know, like constantly having, you know, you one up on somebody. Well, I did this self-blame. Now we see a lot of self-blame going on right now, especially with, I can't, you know, with the shift, you know, not having enough staff, not having enough, you know, resources, not having enough supplies, not having enough hands, you know, Mr. Smith died because I, I could have done this. I, you know, but I couldn't because this, right. This is happening a lot and nurses are constantly feeling like I could have like if you have not gone home after your shift thinking I could have just done something else to do better if you have not done that you're rare because some of us even though that we do over and beyond you know 
I'm not perfect. Some days I do slack, but I'm not with patient care, right? If you find yourself getting to that point where it's like, you know, it, or like when you hear call bells still ringing when you're sleeping, I don't know how many out there still hear about call, hear call bells and they're when they're sleeping and wake up because they got to go answer the, the call bell. Um, you know, I've had many of those, like your mind is constantly thinking, what could I have done better? Well, we always want to do better, right? But we've gotten so conditioned with what is happening out there that it's like, so how much more can you push, you know, Sandy? How much more can you push, you know, Megan? How much more can you push your staff until they break? Or no, they'll never break. They're superheroes, right? Well, that's a fallacy because we're not superheroes. Last time I checked, if you don't wear any at all, we all wear underwear, right? You know, I might get a snicker here out in there, you know, and in in whoever's watching this, but we actually have, you know, we're just like everybody else, right? We're not superheroes. We try very hard, but that's labeling and putting a false thought in our heads. Oh, well, we have to be a superhero. We have to meet these expectations. We have to do this. We are strong and we are a very strong profession, extremely strong. And I'm so excited about where we're about to go. We're about to revolutionize like healthcare as, as a whole, especially our profession of nursing. So um, I want to just give you a little bit of what's going to be happening. You know, that's what's going to happen. This is nursing is changing forever right here. Now, this is the future of nursing. We are changing it. And um, so the way that I'm trying to help is, is talking about how we, we don't catch ourselves with a self-defeating talk. We are always out to try to be better. We're, and we always should be, we're going to school. We're, you know, we're constantly trying to get ahead. We're trying to be better citizens, um, trying to do a lot of personal development. You know, we're just trying to do our best and surviving and also trying to get to the next level of our own lives. So that self-defeating talk kind of takes you a step backwards, sometimes a little bit more when you say that you can't, you really can. So instead of saying, I can't catch yourself and say, you know what? I can. And you know why? This is how I can do this. This is the next step I'm going to take. Write it down because that's going to be your next step to getting to your goal, right? Um, that isn't my luck, right? Okay, so you just said that you don't have any good luck, that you just are a Munson, that you just completely are unable to, you know, you have to be completely lucky to win the lottery in order to have a good shift. No, 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 no. We can all make this shift better. Even if somebody starts laughing in the middle of, you know, doing whatever, you know, if you can break the monotony of doing something silly, and I'm sure a lot of my nurse friends out there will agree, if you can just break the monotony of laughing, putting like the RBF, like, right? This is like, right? Nobody wants to come up to you with a face like that. You'll be crushing meds. Nobody wants, nobody wants to come up to you. They're scared of you. So it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, you kind of act silly and you're just like, people always come up to you, you know, and they ask you for something and they leave you alone, right? It's the magic of changing the frown upside down. I know it seems so bad, um, but we're conditioning ourselves by having RBF, by having these negative thoughts. And the, the thought process that's out there is so contagious People out there, I know you've heard this, and I talk about this all the time, violence is not a part of the job. What is happening is not a part of the job, right? Doing a bedpan is a part of the job. Helping your CNAs, that's a part of the job. Helping each other is a part of the job. Helping each other stay up, that's, that's what we do right? We became nurses. We're nurturers. We care. We give a, a huge part of our lives in school, 
I mean, seriously, who out there has passed nursing school? I hope almost everybody that's on the page is past nursing school. And I can tell you right now, you get through nursing school, you're a freaking, you're amazing because nobody can do what we do. And then if you continue on, I'm not saying you're a superhero. I'm telling you that you are super dedicated and you're amazing that you could even just like go through that and juggle and, and try to make ends meet as well as also trying to learn and be on your best, like, like nonstop giving every bit of yourself, every bit of yourself to your profession. And then it turns around and it treats you the way it does. I get it. You are, you are not alone. And these conditioning behaviors of calling you a superhero, calling you, these are the way things have always been, right? So I'm not going to change it. You just need to keep your mouth shut, deal with it. It's a part of the, it's just the way it is. Not talking positive about your work or, or anybody else. Oh my God, I can't stand this. I don't, uh, I, 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 okay. Nobody wants to hear it first and foremost. And if you're in a negative space, let's get you out of that negative space together. One person can ruin a whole floor. Now I might be talking to some administrators right now. And if you're one of those administrators, Please understand, and even if you're, you know, a CNA, anyone, anyone's behavior, even a patient's behavior can really change and morph that floor's outlook on how that day goes, right? So we all want to try to work together, try to keep each other up because nobody goes down with us. Everybody is a part of the family that is a part of our crew, right? So nurse administrators, come on, man. It, grab a cart, get on the floor, help. If you've got an RN, you're an RN. See, chief nurse officers, get your scrubs on, go and help and work and work with your floors. I'm going to tell you the morale that will happen. You will see it go up and you will have so many people like, oh, Dr. Sandy really cares about what I do. You will not believe what you will do. If you just get your scrubs on, if you just get that stethoscope on, if you answer some call lights, do some bedpans, you will not believe what will end up happening to your floor. Now, people talk about, well, how can we stop violence in healthcare? I'm telling you right now, you got to build your morale. We have nurses leaving the floor. If we don't have, and I, I get it, I get it. Everybody has a lot, to, a lot of work to do. But I keep telling in my webinars, I keep giving and dropping nuggets about how we can change healthcare, right? And it's not just about legislation. Legislation's not going to actually do anything for years down the line. Meanwhile, we have nurses that we're struggling to keep. Um, so by not talking positive about your work or even yourself, that you are not doing a good enough job because Mr. Smith died from COVID, holy holy crap. Okay. That's not your fault. You're doing, if you're doing everything that you possibly can, then you did everything that you possibly can. You can't just, I know it's hard to walk away. You're always going to have, every patient's going to have a piece of your heart. Every job is going to have a piece of your heart, unless they're really bad, unless they're really bad to you. But you're there, you save lives. You got that nursing degree. You're going to nursing school. You're going without like, you know, good meals. You're going, you're not seeing your kids. You know, even those that are on the floor, you're sacrificing everything in order to be able to be there. One way or another, you're sacrificing. And when are you gonna stop sacrificing you? It is very important that we keep each other okay here because if we're not and i'm not your responsibility either is your neighbor that you work with but i'm going to tell you if you can sit there and you see that they did a great job and you say hey you know what you did you handled that code like amazing and really mean it let me tell you you guys if you never talked before you might start talking and that's going to start really start compiling itself and people are really going to build relationships. That is the key here. We're missing building the key. 
uh, building relationships is the key to success and how to prevent violence in healthcare. How many of you guys are on your phone? Okay, this is not a phone, it's a calculator. But how many are you, you guys are on your phones and you're looking up meds and or you're doing something and, and your kids, you're missing, they missed the bus and God knows what else. And then somebody comes over to you and they're like, hey, I, hey, can I get my pay meds? Oh, right. I know I'm speaking to the choir. I know some of you guys out there know what I'm talking about. I know you would never go off on your patient. I know that. But let me tell you, it gets to, it gets pretty crazy out there when especially if you feel like nobody is supporting you. So again, we're not superheroes. We want to be, but we're not. And if you like myself have bought into the superhero thing, which, you know, it's always been kind of a joke because I juggle so many like different things. If that's something that you do, great. But I'm going to tell you, you're taking the fast path to burnout and burnout comes acute stress disorder. And then after that, after 30 days, it becomes or roughly 30 days, it becomes post-traumatic stress disorder. If you cannot let it go and you're still thinking about work, what do you think is happening to the morale? What do you think is happening to nursing? Nurses by nature, nurses aides, nursing students have a tendency of being extremely hard on themselves. I don't know one person, I've never met a nurse or a nursing student or anybody I've ever taught that has not been so hard on themselves. If you didn't do well at something, pick up, meet yourself where you're at and do better, okay? Learn from it, keep moving forward. When you stop, and you dwell and you get in that negative space, it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do you, it doesn't do anybody else any good. So how do we break this bad habit? So, so start eliminating negative words like, instead of the, the opposite, like I can't, I can, right? Catch yourself, it's gonna be very hard. So instead of saying, oh, I really, I really, really did a crappy job today. But did you, did you wake up? You, you took another breath for that day. I think you're pretty successful with that. Are you going to make mistakes? Absolutely. You're going to make mistakes. Every nurse out there that's has made a mistake, you know, and if you haven't, then you're lying because a lot of nurses have made mistakes, right? Some of them have been fatal mistakes, which is our nurse in Vanderbilt. You know, we got to be very careful. And she, you know, she was juggling. I, I can get into that story, but she was a new nurse herself and she was, she had a men, mentee with her and she was an ER float. Are you serious? That's setting her up for failure. We can't do that as, as like graduate nurses, as, as like administration level, we cannot set the nurses up to fail by doing that. You're going to end up having so many problems down the road, you're, you're gonna set them up to fail and you're gonna have no staff and you're gonna have burnout. You're gonna have people leaving. Am I, am I ringing a bell here? That's kind of like what's been happening. Um, tell yourself things that you would tell your children. Things that you would tell your patients. You're doing great, Mr. Smith. Sandy, you're doing great today. How many people are going to tell you you're doing a great job today? Nobody. Because I'm going to tell you, even in your personal life, you maybe have, you, you might have less than this many people that you will talk to in your life that are going to be close to you, that will know you, that will actually want to be around you. Everybody else is an acquaintance. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. I always welcome people in my space, right? But there's also has to be a healthy boundary as well. So remember, we must talk to people, you know, talk to ourselves the way that we talk to people. Like, you know, hey, um, I love you. Tell yourself in the mirror, hey, you're doing a great job. I know it seems silly and it seems foofy. It seems like anybody can do this. Well, guess what? Anyone can do this. And it's just that easy. You know, um, 
you know, I, I, I'm going to back up a little bit, start telling your, looking at yourself in the mirror again and tell yourself like you're amazing at, what are you amazing at? You know what? You did really well on those chest compressions, or you did really well with how you talked to Mr. Smith and he was in your face. You did really well on how you handled that, you know, whatever it was. And you look at yourself in the mirror because you're going to be your own like superhero. If you want to call your anyone a superhero, you're going to be your own role model. And, and if you're, what would your kids think? Right? Your kids, if they're working with you on the floor, what, what would they say? Mom, you're doing a great job. Hey, dad, that was amazing. You're like, awesome. Okay. Tell yourself that. Tell yourself, thank you. Thank you for waking up today. Thank you. Thank you for taking a step out of bed, relieving yourself and going to get dressed for the day. Because not a lot of people want to do that. And always catch yourself before you get caught, right? Don't let nobody let you fall, even yourself. By allowing somebody to belittle you is taking away, and you believing it is taking away your power. So what I'm going to say is that I hope you know by being on the page and also in our support group, you are not alone. That in your daily struggles, you know, of trying to smile, and that, you know, these, even the, even these thoughts are things that, you know, are tough and nobody understands, you know, these things going around in your head about horrible, how horrible you did and stuff like that. You're not alone. The people you work with feel the same way. And if they don't, then they're not admitting that they're human. Not everybody will be in your corner, not even not everyone's going to care. But as nurses, we have a bond unlike any other. A heart unmatched. You are special. You are loved. You are a nurse. And a part of my nursing family. For this, I am grateful. Try not to get choked up. So that being said, this is going to conclu conclude this nurse talk. Um, I would like to invite you. We're also on anchor. We're doing, I'm doing like a little podcast thing that I release on Thursday nights. Um, and I just want you to know that we as a nursing profession are coming together every day. If you, if you feel alone, know that you're not. I am here. Somebody else is out there. If you don't feel comfortable with talking to me, I don't charge. This is, this is free guys. This is, this is what we do. We're nurses. So with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful week. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or if you're doing something amazing out there in the field, I would love to be able to have you come on and talk with me. I want to hear about it. And let's celebrate our profession. That's what we need to do. And we need to be there for each other. Have a great week, guys. Bye.